The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 15th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie has got your back. Send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're in the Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We'll be beginning our, our day with a mixed bag, whether it's the sectors inside the S&P 500 or the U.S. indices out there. Got the Dow trading down 87 points. s and down 22. NASDAQ 229. It's a little over 1% move to the downside for the NASDAQ. You've got the Russell that's up 8 points. Semi's down 215, nearly 4% there. We'll certainly take a look at those. Trainers are up 145. That's 9 tenths percent move to the upside. You've got gold trading up 10 bucks. Silver 38 pennies. Natural gas up three cents. Light recruit is up three dollars and sixty five cents. So 30 year treasury up one point and six ticks. He's printed out at one twenty thirty one. Now our leaders in the clubhouse um, dollar wise are uh, BlackRock up twelve dollars. That's uh, printing out at one thousand and four. That's up a little over one percent. Ameriprise Financial about ten dollars two percent. Equinix almost ten dollars. Where'd that go? Uh, a little over one percent. Uh, Martin Marietta just jumped in the game. They're up 15 bucks, 2.7 percent. Alta Beauty is up nine bucks, and Sencora is up 9.26. That's a four percent move. Our shakers to the downside, led by Asmill Holdings, 115 bucks, 13 percent move there. KLA Corp, 70 bucks, 8 percent. United Health, 38 bucks, 6 percent. Monolithic Power Systems, 36 bucks, nearly 4 percent. Arista Networks, 27 bucks, uh, nearly 7 percent there. So we got movers, but we definitely have shakers. So let's go start our day by taking a look at, let's look at that New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, that's panel number two on this chart. It has poked its head above that zero threshold level. Uh, if it does close above it today and tomorrow, that's going to tell us that buyers are the ones that are in control. Now, that's opposed. That's opposite of what we have as a signal in the spot fix index. You look at the very bottom panel, the spot fix uh uh, in the EMA, the 50-day EMA, I should say, is at uh, 1824. The spot fix right now trading at 2012. So we've got divergent signals there. That would say really more of a consolidation is what you would expect or anticipate, at least for the S&P 500. Uh, what else do we need? Oh, I tell you what else we can look at. I mentioned during, well, it's back. Okay. So that uh, profile that I gave to you for the NQ, that seems to be, now again, I won't have confirmation of this until this evening. Um but I did uh, I did refresh that screen. It did go away. It's come back. So it seems relatively solid right now. We look at my white background charts. That will also assist us with that. But right now, what I can share with you is you've got buyers at 21.35.75. That's inside the NQ. Uh, the next support zone to the downside is at 22.91. That's the center of its profile. So this is a slightly bullish structured profile. So the buy zone 21.35 to 22.91, and the price target or the top of the profile, I should say. Is 
is at 25.25. If price closes above that today, that's just going to be additional confirmation. We should see a move, should see a move to 21.237. Um, if we take a look at the Dow, you can see the Dow equity future contract has made the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection. That would require a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top there. We don't have that as we speak right now. Maybe we do at day's end, so we want to keep an eye on that. If we don't get a, bull, a bearish reversal candle, that suggests that the equity future contract wants to go target 44 210 out there. In the case of the Russell 2000, the only one of the four equity future contracts trading the upside, it's trading with inside its profile, its resistance level is up at the 2286 level out there. Mm, anything else for me to show you on this set of charts? I don't think so. So let's do this here. Let's go change over. Let's just stick with the theme of the NQ. We're going to change the Stevie's 8 panel, intraday, multi-time frame set of charts out there, the largest time frame being the daily on this set of charts out here. Screens, there we go. Now, we'll take a look at the uh, daily profile. So it has not shown up on my white background system. And what we can see here, what's nice about this system, is I've got that oscillator and change line. You can see that screen. And so far, today's move lower has been nothing more than a test of support. The test of support here, now I'm going to go with the top of the profile, so it doesn't have that new one in there, is at the 2357 level. So it's also suggesting by day zen, that profile may not form. But here, as long as price holds that green oscillator and change line, that's at 2391. Um, this has been nothing more than just a retracement back to support. That's it. If price closes below that level, uh, it depends on whether or not a new profile forms or not. But what I would say if price does close below the uh, 2357 uh, level, that could be signaling to you and I a move back. That, you know, if that profile does form, that next support level really would be at that 2135 to 2291. Now, that's the daily time frame. Let's see what's going on really intraday here. Let's start with a 10 minute time frame chart. 10 minute time frame chart, a big cascade to the downside. All that that did was generate a TD9 count bottom. That's right on a 10 minute basis. That was a buying opportunity to tell you that price should rally up towards that oscillator and change line at 2478. We don't have that same signal. We take a look at the the 15 minute chart, of course, it doesn't have all of its signals out there, nor does the 30 minute. Not really sure why it's not getting and I don't have a bottom signal on the 30 minute, nor do I on the 60 minute time frame chart. Let me just reload something here. Okay. Just making sure nothing there. Two hour chart uh, support, should the market move lower, would be a 2238. Uh, that gets you inside that new buy zone of the daily profile. No uh, support that I see on the 240. Uh, nothing on the. So right now, it's really all about the uh, 10 minute time frame chart, quite frankly, and the daily chart, which found support at that uh, oscillator and change line out there. So that's what I see. Uh, no other significant top or anything along those lines inside of the NQ. Um, what do we want to look at next? Why don't we take a look at the ES Mini, uh, see what its set of multi-day time frame charts are uh, signaling to an eye. Does its 10-minute time frame chart also have a TD9 count bottom? And Stevie doesn't know that, but we're going to find out here momentarily, and it does not. So we don't have things that are in sync. Who's leading the charge out here? What I can share with you on the ES Mini for that 10-minute time frame, it does have a bullish structure profile. Support at 5881. Uh, the center is at 5884. And if we close about 58.84 in six minutes out there, that's going to suggest to move to the 58.95 level. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Why don't we do this? We come back from this break. We've got a couple of questions that have come in. Let's go answer those. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Bell subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, be before we go move over and take a look at the requests that have come in so far, I did notice on the uh, four-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini, as a nice TD9 count on top. I think we talked about that yesterday. And we can see that price has found support at the bottom of its profile. So you want to watch that 58.84 uh, level out there at this stage here between uh, the NQ hitting uh, support of that daily oscillator and change line. Um, with the uh, four-hour time frame, ES yes, Mini Fund is supported 58.84 out there. Just be cautious to the uh, downside. Let's go take a look at that uh, semiconductor index before we look at requests as well, because that's uh, down nearly 4%. What is that doing? Well, on a daily time frame out here, that is uh, testing its oscillator and change line as well. 52.57. We are trading before that. We are trading below that right now. But watch that 52.57 level at day's end. If that in fact holds, now I don't know where price will close. It's very possible that this TD9 count pattern uh, will be uh, violent and will be and will go away. But it really depends on today's close out there. Now, do we have a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside? Is this completing or generating a sell the D point top as we speak right now? Well, let's go answer that question. Let's draw in the A to B line out there. And uh, I'm just simply going to I'll, I'll copy. I'll copy and paste this one. Let's cut, copy, paste. Let's see. Control C, Control V. There we go. So we copied. Now we're going to paste and let's assemble this thing. And so it has not attained the one-to-one -one price objective level out here. So I take a look at the semiconductor, uh, semiconductor index out there. I don't have any kind of a uh, topping signal. Doesn't mean it can't have top. And if it does close below that oscillator and change line again, 52.57, that would suggest we could see a further retracement out there. But right now, price is testing support. All right, so let's go move on to some requests. A couple that came in yesterday. Our first one from Eddie in Boca Raton, and Eddie wants to take a look at one of his favorite stocks, which is NVIDIA. Now, if NVIDIA today closes above, Eddie, close above 132.65, we're trading below that right now. If it closes above 132.65, you will have a complete, you'll have a confirmed TD9 count top. 
Now, what would be difficult about this is that price is testing that green oscillator and change line. So it could form a TD9 count top with support holding out there, and that would then generate a neutral signal. Now, there is a new daily profile that has formed. You have uh, support or a buy zone eddy, and this is a daily time frame, between 127.16 and 130.72. Um, your resistance level is at 136.05. So you know where buyers and sellers are located. Of course, you have the buyers, in essence, at that green oscillator and change line, uh, very close to the uh, profile level, 130.72. Profile is 130.72. I shouldn't change line, maybe just a couple pennies above that. Um, you've got a monthly TD9 count top, but that signal is neutral because price found support at the I and change line. But you do have resistance at 140.76. You're trading above resistance on the weekly time frame, but price is taking on a prior resistance level that was a TD9 count top. That was week of June 21st. Now, the volume there was 1.7 billion shares. Last week, 1.3 billion shares to the upside. So with regard to NVIDIA, watch this 130.72 level. Price close below that. It would suggest move back to the 127.16 area. If price were to close below that, then you have a profile change in trend, and we'd be looking at something else. So far, price just testing support in NVIDIA. Eddie also wanted to take a look at Goldman Sachs. GS is the ticker symbol. Let's get over there. We take a look at Goldman Sachs. You're going to get bar number eight today of a TD9 count. That says you could get a top between today and Thursday. There's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Let's go draw that in. It looks to me like we've attained the uh, initial level out there. That does not mean that it's a top. But let's at least go draw it in. Let's not use Stevie's eyes because I wouldn't use Stevie's eyes. So there's the A to B equals C. There's the A to B pattern out here. Let's uh, copy. Let's paste. And now let's assemble. And there we go. So it has attained the one-to-one -one level. If we don't get a bearish reversal candle, which we don't, which we, let me see. Hold on a minute here. Yesterday's low. 515.51. Today's low, 515.51. We do not have a key reversal bar. Price needed to tick one penny below where it did today in order to generate that. So no bearish reversal candle as we speak just yet, but there could be a TD9 count top that is forming out there. If I, uh, let me see here. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart would negate a Rotomentum indicator top this week with a close above 517.26. We're at 524.81 right now. The monthly chart would negate its TD9 count top with a close above the high of 517.26 out there. So Goldman Sachs looked pretty bullish. Well, the monthly chart looks bullish. The weekly chart looks bullish. The daily chart right now is bullish as well, even though it's sold off. And the question is, does this go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top tomorrow? Complete that on Thursday and then pull back to retest support which would be at about 513 to 24, the top of its profile. So, Eddie, I hope that helped you out with both those instruments. And uh, as always, thanks so much for writing in and also waiting a day until we could get to those. Uh, we had Rob, uh, who is a long-term holder of ABBV out here. So let's go take a look at it. It's held up pretty well. It's an ABBV in uh, the semiconductor space out there. Maybe Stevie's wrong on that. I think that it is, but let's not worry about whether it is or it isn't. If it is, it's holding up pretty well. What we have out here is a price testing support today. Uh, Bob, we're looking, Robert, uh, we're taking a look at the uh, daily time frame. So you've got support at the top of its profile. The top of its profile is printed at 194.18. Resistance at its oscillator and change on 195.97. Kind of a tight, if you will, uh, trading range. But that is the trading range. If price close below the top of that daily profile, the support level, you can be looking at a move down to the buy zone between 191.57 and 192.22. On a weekly time frame, uh, Robert, what you have is a uh, TD9 count top and a consolidation with inside the upper portion, the sell zone, quite frankly, of its weekly profile. And that range out there is between 193.41 and 199.95. Now, what that tells us is that if price were to close below 193.41, you'd be looking at a move back to profile support at the 180.34 level. On a monthly basis, there is a Rosemont indicator signal that has been triggered. I also have potentially a wave number seven top. Let me see if I do. Uh, we started at A, B, C, D, F, G. Yeah. So uh, we will, it looks like we'll get a monthly, well, I don't know if we'll get a monthly confirmation of that pattern or not. we got to really come back at the end of the month. Bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. So potential top on the monthly, definite top on the uh, daily. 
I see a wave number seven top on the, I'm sorry, the weekly. There's definitely TD Nike out top there. And the daily had a, a wave number seven top. Um, you just got a consolidation pattern, it looks like, you know, that could, well, let's call it what it is. Support is held. We've given that level on the daily time frame and resistance. So long-term trader, um, I'm not seeing reasons to uh, jettison your position out there. You may see some more additional heat out there. And again, I think that level is going to be that 193.41. So Rob, thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a terrific Tuesday. Hector and Patty wrote in. Interesting question uh, from uh, Hector and Patty. And we're going to go take a look at that when we get back from this break. But in essence, just as a teaser, their question is, or Hector's question is, is there a directional correlation between the TLT and the GDX? We're going to answer that question as soon as we come back. Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So the question on the table is from Hector and Patty. And their question is, is there a directional correlation between the TLT and the uh, GDX? So I've got two sets of charts up here. Uh, both that have feature the GDX are both in the upper panel. These are correlation charts. They are set to a three-day correlation. So about the tightest correlation pattern that I can come up with. And the bottom is the, uh, G is the gold contract, the December gold contract on the left. And on the right is the uh, TLT. The bars here that are above the zero threshold level tell you there's a three-day directional correlation, meaning one goes up, the other goes up more times than that, the majority of the time. If we look at the TLT and the GDX, we can see bars. Well, first thing we can see is the correlation between gold and the GDX is much better than the TLT and the GDX. So that's the first thing that we know. Is there a directional correlation? You know, there are more bars, Hector and Patty, to the upside than to the downside. And I'd say especially starting back in the uh, June time frame, the late June time frame, I would see that. Um, you know, so there's some. But is that the correlation we should pay attention to or should we just be watching the pattern? So, for example, your question, the reason for bringing this up was because uh, TLT or the 30-year Treasury appears to have bottomed. Is that just a counter trend move or is that some type of solid bottom? I don't know the answer to that question, um, but and we'll find out over time. In the case of the TLT, you know, we don't have a profile that we're dealing with just yet. We wouldn't get to that until we get to 97.75. But quite frankly, we know there's uh, other profile levels inside the, I believe there is, inside the 30-year that aren't going to match up to the TLT. With regard to the GDX, if price can close today above 40.26, that is the top of its profile. Then what we should see is a uh, move back towards its highs out here. And the highs I'm referring to get us back to September 26, anywhere between 41.22 and 41.95. Um, so I don't have a profile level that I'm contending with here. Is there some correlation? that There is a correlation that exists. But is that the real correlation or the best correlation to use? I would say no. I would say it's really going to be about gold. And so when it's about gold, what we need to know is, you know, what's gold doing? And we take a look at gold right now, it's just consolidated with inside its profile level. Looks like it wants to make a run for the top of that profile. And that's at the 26.90.60 level. If pricing close above that, we likely head back to its all-time high out there. I think we're headed back to its all-time high. And the reason why I think that is because that's what the charts are communicating to us. For example, here is gold price in the major currencies. We are at a new all-time high today in terms of euros. So maybe there's some sellers. I don't even see sellers, at least in terms of uh, U.S. dollars. We're at new all-time high in terms of euros today, uh, in terms of Canadian loonie, in terms of uh, Swiss franc, in, in terms of Chinese yuan, in terms of Aussie dollars out there. They were making new all-time highs yesterday where the uh, dollar, where, where gold price in dollars had not. This is not how tops form in gold. So that says we're headed back at least to the all-time high. But prices right now, with regard to gold, is dealing with that uh, set of profiles that have sellers up at the level of 26.90, 60. So that would be the area that I'd be watching. Here we can see on the 30-year Treasury, whereas we had no profile levels to deal with there, we can see on the 30-year Treasury, which would really be somewhat of the underlying instrument, for the TLT, we can see a price right now is taking on the center of its bullish structured profile, Hector. And a close today above 120.26, that's the center line out there, that would suggest a move to 122.16. Typically, when you close above the bottom or the center of a bullish structured profile, buyers usually have the energy to push price up to resistance. Now, we only had price below the bottom of that daily profile for one day, so that was not a profile change in trend signal. In fact, yesterday's move was a false move to the downside, plus it was a TD nine count bottom pattern. So I'd say that the uh, TLT is going to head higher. I, it's going to follow along as the uh, 30-year Treasury makes its move to 122.16. What happens there? That I don't know. So I hope that helped you out with regard to gold, the TLT, where it's likely headed to. But if not, please write back and I'll make sure to get that information for you. As always, thanks so much for your request. Uh, the next request is uh, from GTE. There's about three requests there that we'll take. Uh, KWEB is the one that we're going to go take a look at. We're going to change our screens, go back to that white set of background screens out here. We'll be there momentarily. And we take a look at KWEB out here. KWEB, it looks to me like it is uh, 
uh, it's either forming an A to B equal CD to the downside, or maybe that retracement wasn't a 0.382 retracement, but we are trading below the center of its profile. Uh, it looks to me like KWEB wants to go target 2890 to 2988. 2890 being its breakout level, 2988 being profile support. The uh, weekly time frame, I see an A to B equals C to sell the D point pattern that formed last week. Price should go target 3055. So you got 3055 to 2988 as being price targets to the downside. Monthly chart, too early to really call anything there. You could get a monthly sell the D point, but price would have to basically stop right now because we have a bearish shooting star candle. So that's what we see when we take a KWEB. You also want to look at Ulta, U L T A. Alta right now is trading at $378.67. It has a TD9 count bottom. It is trading above its oscillator and change line. Alta is heading to 381.77. If it can close above 381.77, its next resistance battle will be 385.17. If it close above 385.17, you're on your way to 404.31 out there. The monthly chart price pulled all the way back to its breakout level. That held. And now you've just simply got a consolidation with inside its profiles. Support zone being 369.49 to 395.18. And resistance up at 446.47. So Ulta Beauty looks beautiful. And its rally should continue with a move up to the 381.71 level. The last one you wanted to take a look at is ICLN. So let's go see what this instrument is doing here. ICLN is uh, what? Not sure. But what I do know, it's going to form a bottom today. What do you mean, Steve? You're telling me the iShares Trust Global Clean Energy ETF is going to form a bottom today? Well, what it's doing is completing a TD9 count bottom. I don't know whether it's going to bottom, but if you were looking for a bottom, well, today's giving you that signal. What should take place is price should first rally up to the bottom of its profile. That's what it's trading below. Now, that's a strong, looks to me like that's a strong resistance level. Now, the price is below it. Why would that be, Steve? Because the center and the bottom bottom are at the same price, 1361. So GTE, if price, today's going to get a TD9 count bottom. It should rally up towards its oscillator and change on 1397, but it won't get there unless it can take out the sellers uh, that exist. They used to be buyers at the one at the 1361 level. So you should get the 1361 to close above that. You continue to head higher. The weekly time frame chart, what is it doing? Been consolidating for the most part with inside its profile. It is trading below the bottom of the profile right now, but it's only Tuesday. And from a uh, monthly standpoint, you certainly have a consolidation with inside its profile running from the range of 1339 up to 1539 out there. So, uh, what the uh, iShares Trust Global Energy ETF should do, and I think you think that it's going lower, Stevie's charts say today is a bottom. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts,
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the stock charts here for Mosaic MOS as a ticker symbol is for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. This is a tough chart to read, uh, uh, Steve. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, what we see here is prices trading below its oscillator and change line, which it has been doing ever since October of 2022. So what that tells you, if you're ever taking a long trade here, that that's significant resistance, the oscillator and change line. And if you ever do close above it, then you're going to have a, a definite change in trend signal. So that's a monthly chart. No bottom signal there. Suggests a mosaic could be moving back to 1151 weekly time frame chart. I really don't have a signal here. Well, the signal is that price is trading below the bottom of its weekly profile, so not necessarily a great thing there. The daily one is a chart to watch. Why? So, Dunk, you had that TD9 count bottom. You saw that. You see that out there. Then we rally. I don't know why we stopped at wave number four, but that's, uh, you know, why we might have. Because if you take a look at the Basil Chapman toolbox out there, he often says, always says, he doesn't often, he always says, once you get to the fourth move, that's letter D, you may do something else. Well, in this case here, it's retraced all the way back to the center line of its profile. That also happens to be the 0.786 retracement of the low from the TD9 count bottom to the high of bar number of, of, of uh, peak number uh, four or letter D out there. So you could be, this could be setting up an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. You just never know with regard to that C point, but you have retraced back to a logical level of support. And right now that a daily basis price is really testing that oscillator and change line. If it closes below that, we could see a move back to 2537 out there. So it's a tough read out here with regard to this instrument, but it does have, there is the potential here that it has formed the C point of an A to B equals CD pattern that's going to try to uh, that's that will try to unfold out there and as long as price remains above profile resistance 2537 and can remain above its oscillator and change line you should see a run for that uh, recent high that was that uh, fourth peak out there so I hope that helps you out with regard to mosaic uh, uh, always uh, thanks so much Duncan for writing in much appreciated Fletch wants to go take a look at GEO we take a look at GEO we can see that price on a daily basis it negated its TD9 count top that's a beautiful thing that suggests that price should go target uh, 1681 we're trading above profile resistance we're trading above its green acid and change line and yesterday it negated a TD9 count top off to the races 1681 one. The weekly time frame chart, prices trade above profile and oscillator and change on resistance. That suggests heading back to its high. Now, the high could get you back into the price range between 1630 to 1805 on a monthly time frame out here. We have a TD9 count top. That pattern would be negated. That's what price is going to go target is that high, 1631. 
Your price closes above that on a monthly basis, then you've negated that signal. Well, hold on a minute here, Stevie. Not so fast. Stevie takes that back. There's also a sell the D point. So there's a TD nine count top and a sell the D point because of that big old shooting star candle from back in July of 2024. So um, we're trading inside that candle right now. Uh, volume wise back then was 57 million shares. We're only halfway through the month. We're at 18 million shares. So a little bit light in the loafers out there, but nonetheless, GEO is headed higher. Now, intraday, Fletch, you do have a TD nine count top that price has to contend with. That's coming on the 30 minute time frame. At this moment in time, prices pull back to test support. That's an oscillator and change line. And we have a new profile on a 30 minute basis that form below price. That's a bullish signal out there. So what you'd really be watching for today is a close above that TD nine count high. That's the high of the day, 1516. And if you get that, that's telling you you are really off to the races. Those races should take you up towards that 1681 area. So Fletch, I hope that helped you out with regard to GEO and best of luck to you in that trade. Let's take a look at uh, Swim out here. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Um, sold some current uh, thoughts about the current market, wondering where the TD9 is signaling. Perfect. So you are trading on a daily time frame. You are trading above resistance. That's both the top of its profile at 693 and a sausage and change on. You're just above it by a smidgen. It being 711, you're trading at 713. The weekly time frame is nothing but bullish out here. No topping signals, price trading above our resistance levels. Yes, there's a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but that requires a bearish reversal candle. Uh, we're uh, So that suggests higher price. The monthly chart for SWIM suggests higher price as well. You're trading above profile resistance. Dan, I don't know what else I can provide to you other than one thing. I said I don't know, but then I looked at another screen and I said, oh, wait, there is one more thing that I can share with you. And that is that in uh, 30 minutes from now, no, I take that back. In uh, seven in thirteen minutes from now, Stevie just working on his math aptitude. Uh, we are going to complete a TD nine count top for a swim. So all that that is suggesting, Dan, is you ought to see a little bit of a timeout. Price pull back to test support. The first support level will be seven oh two. The second support level six ninety four. The third six eighty nine. The fourth six eighty three. The fifth six eighty. So those would be the levels in progression. I'm not saying you're getting down to six eighty. I'm definitely not saying you're getting down there. But you do have a thirty minute TD nine count top to contend with. Whatever the high of the day is, though, if price closes above that, that tells you you're really headed higher in swim. So I hope that helped you out. As always, thank you for playing the game. Hey, let's give Stevie a request out there. Now, Stevie's given himself his own request, and that request is let's go take a look at the U.S. dollar index. I had shared with you that uh, – well, let me just – instead of sharing, let me show you. We're going to go ahead and change screens, and then we're going to try to remember to get back to the other screen out here. We're going to go to the black background screen just simply because for the U.S. dollar index, I've got to change data feeds and all that kind of stuff. But this is the data feed that I'm using here on the black background chart. And here what we see yesterday, there was a TD9 count top that went ahead and uh, formed on October the 10th. I believe it completed the very next day. Yesterday, we closed above that high, that high being 102.96. That would signal to you and I that we should be heading back to 104.16. However, Lee Corso got in on the game and he said, hey, Stevie, not so fast. Why don't you go take a look at the underlying instruments and see if that really is the right call? All right, so let's go take Lee's uh, uh, request out there. He sent in a request. Yep, he did. And let's go take a look at it. Uh, uh, let's go take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound. Why? Because they represent 83% of the holdings. Well, let's take a look at the euro initially here. On a daily time frame, you've got a TD9 count bottom. So the dollar negated its TD9 count bottom yesterday. Did the euro do the same? And the answer is no, it did not. In order to negate the TD9 count bottom for the euro, we must see a close below 1.0900, period. We did not get that yesterday. We got a test rejection. We have a test rejection of that level today. Watch today's close. If price closed below that, that would add to the idea of the U.S. dollar index rallying towards the 104.16 level. Here you've got 57% of the weighting. If this TD9 count bottom holds, then I question the TD9 count top that failed and whether that's going to really lead to higher price. If we take a look at the yen, as the yen is moving higher out here, it is getting weaker. The dollar is getting stronger. Not until we see a bearish reversal candle would that confirm a sell the D point top. We don't have that in place. That suggests it wants to move higher. And finally, if we take a look at the Great British Pound, 
The Great British Pound also has a TD nine count bottom pattern. That formed out here in the trading day of October 10th. That low is at 1.3022. That's where price needs to close below in order to negate its signal. This looks like to me it wants to rally to 131. So guess what? That signal we got on the US dollar index out there, I think that's a false signal. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we still got that mixed bag out there, whether it's U.S. indices that they're trading or the sectors inside of the S&P 500. Uh, yesterday, uh, we took a look at, I believe we took a look at the 30-year Treasury, certainly during the segment uh, that we did with, that I did with uh, uh, Jacob yesterday during the Tom O'Brien show. I gave away a free trade as I reviewed the markets out there. Hopefully you caught that. Uh, caught that uh, segment, um, and uh, and the reason that I, I uh, uh, look, we had what we had was really the perfect and ideal type of setup. What I what I discussed with you, which is on a daily time frame, if you're going to get some type of bottom signal, in this case here, we had a TD nine count uh, pattern that went ahead and confirmed yesterday. We had a buy the D point pattern that confirmed the day before a bullish hammer candle out there. And so that was the uh, signal. Well, so that was that was the signal. To say, go look at the intraday charts and every single one of the intraday charts. So, for example, if you look at a 60 minute time frame chart, it has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out there. And right now it's got a TD nine count top. 
So for subscribers, we're, we're long the uh, TLT. I think right now it's just a counter trend move, but time will tell. But today, if price can close above the high today, and you can see intraday signals on this bottom pattern on the on bottom set of time frames that have topping signals. Well, if uh, price is able to overcome, that means close above. 121.04, that's going to signal a rally up to 121.16. Now, on a two hour time frame chart, it has already, it's already given us the bullish, an additional bullish signal out here. It negated, or it's in the process, I should say, of negating its TD9 count top. Um, so this candle here is going to close at 2 p.m. So no idea what's going to take place between now and 2 a.m. Uh, 2 a.m., 2 p.m. Oh, wait a minute, that's 12 noon, four minutes from now. So the two-hour time frame chart is going to negate its TD9 on top. That suggests that move to 121.16. You still have to deal, I say, with the with the shorter-term intraday uh, resistance levels. And that really is, again, off of that 60-minute TD9 on top at 121.04. We close above that. We continue to move higher. Now, where I believe price is going to head to and where it should head to is um, 121. 121.27 or 26 out there. That's the Ossetian change line. More likely, it heads up to the top of that profile. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming out here. I'll look forward to being back with you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Tuesday and be safe out there. Take care.